with uh, welcoming you to the Smart Break webinar. Uh, we appreciate that you have um, uh, set aside a half an hour to get to know us better. After the webinar, we hope that you have better knowledge of how Smart Break works and for which users on which applications. And our goal is to create more activity and mastery for everyone. Uh, digital meetings are now the new norm, um, and we would like to record the webinar so that it can be shared uh, with those who did not manage to pers uh, pers uh, <laughs> participate live. We also may publish it on uh, our website, so uh, let us know it's, if that's not fine with you. Uh, we are happy to uh, receive questions or comments on an ongoing basis. We have uh, set aside time at the end to answer these, but feel free to write in the chat along the way. Uh, we can also discuss specific user cases after the webinar. So feel free to contact me on uh, email or telephone. I will uh, publish the contact information in the chat. And then I think it's time to into, introduce ourselves. Um, the Smart uh, Group team is today represented by us three. Uh, I will start and Morten will take over. My name is uh, Anna. I'm an occupational therapist with uh, experience from uh, assessive uh, uh, technology and rehabilitation. I started in uh, Smart Group uh, this January uh, as with uh, sales and productions. Yes, and uh, my name is Morten, and I'm uh... Uh, the CEO of uh, Smart Group and started the company together with a uh, couple of other um, founders in uh, in back in 2013. And yeah, we have been working uh, with developing the technology for different applications um, since then, or actually since 2010. Um, and yes, so I will go through a little bit more uh, what we try with to aim with the, with Smart Break and. Um, we also have Anders uh, on the line. He's uh, he's hiding uh, a bit, and he will uh, answer and, and support us with technical uh, issues or questions uh, uh, during the Q and A session. Um, so we can just move on. Um, just to start with the the uh, news we uh, received a couple of weeks ago that we uh, was granted the patent for wireless uh, brakes for bicycles and other rolling equipment uh, so that's uh, a huge uh, achievement and milestone for our technology we we have been working a lot with the um, ip portfolio to try to protect some of the uh, uniqueness in the technology and and we 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 aim to to have this uh, this patent for a wireless uh, wireless brake uh, multifunctional for for bicycles and and um, so that opens a lot of new opportunities uh, applying electronic wireless brakes um, and we see that it's coming more and more within uh, micro mobility to the interest for having electronic smarter components on on bikes um, just to quick recap to, to what where we started. We we developed a wireless technology for uh, a very small uh, special niche uh, roller skis, which is uh, maybe more common in the Nordics, uh, but uh, also surprisingly large in uh, Europe and the US, Canada. Um, and we we developed uh, the, uh, the the smart brake technology as an in integrated the disc brake hydraulic uh, into the um, chassis of the roller ski and with a uh, wireless remote uh, to control it. And so we, this has been a very important testing arena for us, uh, also to learn more about how to uh, make the technology more uh, adjustable and um, smarter according to the user needs. Um, and we like to say that we started with a 
toughest challenge because uh, roller skis are very um, um, short uh, uh, and with a very high um, altitude of um, of the user. So you have to have a very uh, progressive and still adjustable brake to not losing your balance when you're you are uh, pushing the, the lever. Um, uh, and it, it has to tolerate a lot of uh, damage and, and shock uh, from, from the underground and from water and uh, etc. So it has been tested very much uh, during the last uh, 10 years actually. So what we are aiming for now is to to solve three kind of main uh, areas. It's the, the weak grip um, challenge that people uh, with dis disabilities or elderly or kids having a reduced hand grip um, and that that limits their ability to brake on a bike or a wheelchair or other uh, equipment um, and so that goes across all the mobility aids uh, equipment actually um, the second one is the efficiency uh, aspect uh, within uh, micro mobility we see that increasing interest for using uh, smart brake also as a a parking brake or a, a lock uh, for uh, cargo bikes um, uh, that that needs very efficient and, and quick system um, and the th third one is uh, to, to create the, the, the future of the e-bike uh, where everything should be integrated as an electronic platform uh, where there's also increasing interest um, the focus today is on the first one with the uh the uh for mobility aids uh, like uh, special bikes and and, uh, and so forth um we also when we de developed the technology we, we focused a lot on having it as a modular and multi-purpose system so uh developing a range of different uh, remote controllers uh, that could fit together with a control unit um mounted together with a caliper or uh, uh another um part of the bike or uh, the equipment um and so those two together should control uh different uh, functions like brake park lock tilt even drive systems uh, it could be uh, applied for so um so that's that's kind of the 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 main ambition to to have it as modular as possible so you can um build it like lego as we say uh, that you can assemble the kits uh, according to the user needs and also the application that you need and and we are learning uh, day by day in terms of how the smart break kit can be optimized and adapted to to the different needs and how to optimize the the break experience for the user um, uh, so there's other components also on a bike that that could be improved in terms of um, having an uh, optimal brake force for example the the size of the rotor or the disc um, the, the the number of brake units you need on a, a bike if it's a disc or a rim brake etc um, uh, and it, it uh, the target is to have it as modular that you can um, either build it yourself on the web shop uh, you can uh discuss with your distributor uh, in terms of the needs you want and then uh, and, and customize it to to the bike um as a retrofit or as a new uh, new bike um and and um we are having increasingly um experience on on uh, what we would rec recommend as uh, the the solution for the different user and and could advise on that uh, together with the, the distributor that, that will uh, support the customer um we we aim to uh reach out in in the global market with, with smart break and we see that the the user needs are quite uh the similar in in all the different regions um of course there's different incentive schemes and how to uh, to uh, to to use the um, apply the, the smart break in, in different markets but uh we would like to have uh, selective uh, network of, of partners, partners we can work cl closely with um, and, and uh, build up uh, the, the market together with because it's it's important. It's, it's not just the technology, it's the, how you can apply it and how you can support the customer uh, with the technology. That's very important and it's, it's a technology that that, um, that we can 
can can configure and build according to the user need, and then then that that needs to 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 be done in a close co cooperation between us and and the distributor. Um, so so that's that's very important. Anna. And I will uh, shortly talk uh, a little bit of uh, why uh, smart break. The greatest interest was in the soft levers that uh, smart break already solved uh, with the roller safe roll skis. Uh, the technology has been transferred to to three different triggers. There are wireless and it that may makes it uh, easy to place without having cables in the way. Uh, furthermore, uh, the users need the, the, a parking brake uh, to get in and out of the aids. So all uh, triggers have parking brake that are easily activated. Um, the triggers uh, and the parking brake also aims to be used as a lock. Uh, with the smart brake technology, it, it is um, easy to uh, implement function that are adapted to users without uh, requiring uh, normal hand or finger force uh, or function. Um, the the next uh, questions uh, come from companions or parents. They wanted a, a distant break um, to increase independent uh, activity without having to hold on to the vehicle all the time. Uh, and we have that in the hand control. Um, this would uh, allow the uh, companion or parent to uh, look uh, uh, look at the user and uh, communicate during activity without losing control or uh, risk uh, the safety. Um, we want uh, people to be active and therefore we also need to develop uh, ourselves and the products and uh, we have uh, uh, the reverse break that we will talk a bit uh, more about in just a few minutes. Um, I will shortly uh, talk about um, where you can use smart break. We will uh, say you can use uh, smart break on all type, uh, type of bikes. We have experience from uh, two, three, and four wheels, hand bikes and uh, adapted bikes. And to uh, apply a smart brake, you need to have either rim brake or disc brake. As I um, mentioned, uh, we are uh, developing uh, new products. Uh, there uh, is a project on scooters and strollers and uh, wheelchairs uh, at the moment. Great. Um, I will just uh, quickly show the product product the video we have on smart bike and and um, just quickly go through the, the the technology I assume some some of you already know this quite quite good but um, uh, we can uh, highlight some of the um, the, the key functions uh, and then we go into the uh, the reverse break as Anna mentioned so for the smart break it's it's the the the, the brain of the system is in this break unit where you have the the, the motor and and the receiver from the the remote controllers that give the signal to to increase the the hydraulic pressure on a rim caliper or a disc caliper uh, and um, uh, this brake unit will will then uh, be mounted uh, closely to the to the caliper or uh, where it's suitable for uh, for the user or for the for the bike um, for the equipment. Um, and the the first controller is the brake lever, uh, which is 
basically uh, pretty much the same as a, a normal standard brake uh, lever, but it's uh, it's wireless and uh, you have a couple of uh, key points. It's uh, the, the, the parking brake, which is activated by just pushing the lever uh, from you um, with a simple touch. Uh, and it's also the adjustment of the the lever so you can adjust it uh, closer to the, the handlebar of the bike um, and as uh, shown it's, it's very easy to to um, to activate with uh, just a, a, a touch of the finger the second one is the hand controller which is used either as a button brake uh, on the bike or as a remote control as we see here as a companion control uh, where you can use it uh, to to avoid situations in the traffic or uh, also help the uh, user out of the bike with the parking function. The third one, uh, which is the thumb brake, um, is basically a very small lever that you push into the handlebar to to activate, um, and but which is also very compact and can be used as a one-sided uh, brake where you have all the brake levers on one side, for example, for amputees or people with strokes or um, other disabilities. Um, so you can uh, you can use use one one hand. We come back to this lever also on the reverse brake. Yes. Um, uh, as you know, we we also can apply the same uh, system for uh, activity uh, equipment uh, such as um, uh, sleds and uh, and um, sit skis and and uh, wheelchairs with for activities or workouts. Um, where you also apply the, uh, the the roller skis we started with uh, with the um, the brake integrated, um, and the the system is easy to turn on, uh, and it's uh, controlled uh, with um, up to uh, multiple uh, remote controllers controlling the same brake unit. So you can you can uh, have a, a, a brake controller both for the user and for the companion. Uh, on the, at the same time. Um, so here we build the system as we mentioned before, as a legal uh, system. Um, the system also have fail-safe uh, integrated in the software. So you have um, a security break uh, that goes uh, automatically on uh, if there's less than 50%, 15% um, um, battery capacity. Uh, or if you lose the signal, uh, for example, if the um, user is uh, further away than 30 meters from the companion, then the, the security brake activates and uh, you will have control of the user, the ch child or whatever. Um, uh, and and uh, you can go uh, closer and the uh, brake will then uh, deactivate again. Uh, so you, you have control of the, of the speed of the user. Um, then I will quickly go to the uh, new product that we uh, mentioned in the invitation, um, which we have uh, uh, called the Smart Break Switch. Uh, and Switch uh, is the explanation for a reversed brake, where we uh, turned uh, the brake solution um, the opposite way. Um, so as you see on the picture, we have um, uh, you have to activate the brake lever uh, to turn the brake off. Um, and then if you are um, uh, losing the grip of the, uh, the lever, then the brake turns on. So this is a brake uh, suitable for uh, users with the seizures like uh, Epilepsy, um, Parkinson, uh, or other uh, seizures that that creates uh, the situation where you lose the grip of the handlebar or the of the bike or a wheelchair or other uh, equipment. Um, uh, and the the uh, the uh, reverse brake, the switch can be used on all the different brake controllers we have. Uh, so it's it's primarily a software up upgrade that we uh, we um, shift the firmware in the hand control, so you can then um, select uh, which of these brake levers you want to use uh, to to activate um, that brake. 
Um, and you can also combine that brake lever with uh, companion control, for example. So the user itself uh, will have this reverse brake uh, on the bike, and then the companion control can have a normal uh, normal uh, hand control um, uh, controller uh, as a companion control, for example. So we, we are now doing um, uh, testing of, of the solution um, uh, together with the, the software developer. So uh, to, to uh, optimize the functionality in terms of the yeah, lead time, uh, uh, et cetera, for, uh, for delivery. It will work uh, quite as similar as we have on the, on the, uh, the normal uh, brake levers we have. Uh, I can also quickly show you the short video from the, some of the testing we did. This let me just open the video. So We did this on this. Uh, there we go. So this is a very short uh, video where you see the, the user holding the the uh, the brake lever uh, activated uh, to to have a freewheel mode on the on the bike with no brakes on, um, and then uh, releasing the brake by. Uh, uh, and and the brake will will stop. And um, so here uh, on this uh, testing, we also tested uh, in terms of the the lead time from you uh, lose the grip of the of the handlebar until it uh, goes into full stop. Um, so there's uh, there's some development we do there to to optimize uh, uh, the functionality on on that. Um, so we we expect that uh, the the software there can be available quite soon, um, and then the, the the kit is basically the same. So it uh, it uh, follows the same guideline in terms of uh, mounting and use of the of the brake. Great. Um, I think we uh, we have uh, run, run through all the the main issues. Um, any questions, um, comments from from the audience? Let me see. What if a person wants to just slow down some for a turn instead of stopping all the way? Uh, um, and then, then you are referring to the uh, switch brake, the, the reverse brake. Um, I, I, I guess. And, and um, uh, the, uh, the the main setup for a a bike with that system will be that you already have a, a second uh, brake with the normal function. So um, either it could be a, a, a second smart brake uh, lever that, that works the, in the same. Oh, sorry. It's, uh, not on the reverse brake, just on the normal brake. So a normal setup with smart brake. Yes. Uh, go ahead, Martin. Yeah, no. Um, yeah, the the uh, the the smart brake uh, with a normal function um, should should also work uh, for uh, slowing down um, uh, and uh, yeah, uh, braking like uh, thirty to fifty percent of the force instead of hundred percent to to stop fully. Um, so there has been some development uh, and testing in terms of uh, optimizing the the number of, uh, of points you have in the resolution uh, because you have 80 points uh, from 0 to 100% uh, brake force and then 
the number of uh, points you you use to gradually build up the brake force. Um, that's the the part where we we have done some um, some optimization in terms of having a gradual brake force and a feeling that you you will have the uh, like 50% and you can hold it like 50% brake force. Um, and um, uh, yeah, so so it it's, uh, it should be no problem to have a regular um, uh, or, or progressive break like uh, 30 to 50 percent. Mm -hmm. Is there a way to tune strength of the points in the app? Um, yes, and uh, the the uh, uh, the the function we have in the the original app we developed for the uh, the first application of the roller skis that that's uh, that's what we did we uh, we uh, optimized we, we um, the user could optimize how much maximum brake force uh, number of bars they put into the hydraulic pump um, and so so the thinking is that the same uh, system can be applied also for uh, for smart brake um, we don't think it's that's sensitive. It's not uh, because it's uh, on a bike. You have a, a lower um, balance point, or, uh, and so it's not that sensitive in terms of how much maximum or minimum bar uh, pr pressure you have. But it's uh, it's possible to adjust on this in this at the uh, same level. So um, a, a child could have uh, lower maximum brake force or maximum uh, bar in the in the pump. Um, so to to get uh, more gradual and not not that aggressive uh, break, for example, um, and in the opposite way that you can have a higher break force for for heavier users or heavier bikes and and for higher speed. Um, so uh, we we are now. Uh, uh, together with a, um, a company in Singapore developing the the, uh, the second generation of the, the app. So that will uh, include uh, some of this functionality and uh, that we can um, uh, make the users select themselves uh, some of the functionality that we provide in the software. Good. Any other questions? Can the smart break be installed in line in between a normal hydraulic lever and caliper? Uh, in line in between. Um, yeah, so you uh, so you you would um, use both a cabled version and a wireless. So so you have the uh, yeah you you connect the 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 caliper will have both a connection to our uh, smart brake unit, but also to the uh, normal lever. I think. Is that what you mean? Yeah, so so it's um, uh, I think that's a question we need to uh, come back to you on uh, Russia. Uh, I think uh, we we have been thinking about it uh, to, to have a, a kind of a hybrid uh, between a, a, a wireless and a wired uh, brake. Um, it's uh, it's some complications in terms of uh, keeping the hydraulic pressure. I don't know, uh, um, and so so uh, I will let my uh, team uh, answer that uh, afterwards and, and come back to you. We have we have done that on a, um, a on a wire uh, on a linear actuator. Then then we have made this uh, uh, T coupling where you have um, both the the wireless uh, connection that drags the wire but also the uh, original uh, setup so it works on on a wire but it's a little bit more complex on a hydraulic system because you 
can't you, it's difficult to uh, regulate the pressure on the on the uh, in yeah between the two systems yes then i think we'll come back to joshua regarding that yeah yeah um we have uh, already used uh, used the uh, and the time we we thought we will need but uh, if uh, if there are uh, any other questions just uh, send send us an email uh, and we will uh, come back to you yeah and on this uh, this switch uh, product where reverse break and if there's any user case or any uh, um, functionality that you think oh, is important for that type of break then just uh, contact us because it's uh, that's that's uh, part of the phase we are in now to to to, uh, to to see if we can make that as, as uh, uh, relevant as possible for the user great yes. 